All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's still the season of Easter. And for those of you who are just tuning in, happy Easter. <laughs> we've had a couple of conversations already with uh, previous pastor. And, of course, we've shared a lot of Easter wishes around the world. Uh, a lot of people will say, oh, wish my father my Easter, happy Easter celebration and all of that. Such, so much uh, emotions going on everywhere. But, yes, we are excited to still be here in the studio celebrating this uh, joyful um, occasion of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we have another conversation uh, right now. Uh, we've talked about Easter and what it represents, but right now we are talking about it, uh, how it, fe it feels to live our life through the message of Easter, uh, reflecting what Easter represents to our daily lives as individuals, as society, and the world as large. And to do this, I have the Senior Pastor of Peniel Christ Apostolic Gospel Mission in Nigeria, uh, Pastor Sunday Bankoli. Let's just be called Sunday Bankoli. But sorry, sir. <laughs> Welcome to the program. Thank you, sir. So uh, yes, he uh, has been called to an apostolic mandate to the body of Christ amidst a panoply of leadership obligations. Very passionate about evangelism and, um, Mission. you know, missions. To be honest, uh, discipleship with spiritual warfare. Mm. Uh, thank you for coming to the show. Thank you so much. Um, for being that you're me. someone who does a lot of outreaches and you know missions at all, I feel like you'll be in the best position to really tell us as individuals and the society and families how we can best live life, um, reflecting the true message of Easter. And the topic we are, you know, revolving this conversation around is living the Easter message, applying the essence of Jesus Christ's death and resurrection in today's world. Now, uh, breaking it down to the world today with all the predominant things happening, um, the crimes and the injustice, you know, everywhere that seems really rampant, how can we honestly, practically apply um, the message of Easter to bring about positive change and, you know, just kick out the negativity? Um, yeah. I would like to, instead of Easter, use resurrection. I prefer to use resurrection because uh, Easter is mentioned just once in the Bible and was mentioned during a crisis. Whereas uh, resurrection, resurrection is mentioned 42 times wow. in 40 different places. Wow. So we are talking about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I prefer to use resurrection. resurrection. Interchangeably, maybe occasionally, I can say Easter. Easter. No it's a spirit. Resurrection is a spirit. And it's an experience. It's also an expression. So you have the spirit of resurrection, you experience it, then you are able to express it. Mm. It has to start with the spirit. So that's the concept. The spirit, the experience, and the expression. If you don't have the spirit, you can't have the Experience, experience and you cannot express, express it you so you are talking about expressing it um, you must have encounter with it in the scripture Romans chapter 8 because of time I would have read Romans chapter 8 but uh, if you look at verses 1 and 2 and then verse 11 it says if it says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus mm. who walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law Oops, of okay. sin and death. So which means there are two laws that can control a man. The law of sin and death, the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So that is the law of resurrection as against the law of sin and death. So if you go to verse 11, he says, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised Jesus from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies. What that means is he will quicken your nature and then help you to begin to ex exhibit the nature of God. Mm. When you receive the spirit of resurrection, you have the nature of God, you have the wisdom of God, and then you are able to express it. So you have to have encounter with the spirit of resurrection to be able to express it to the world. 
Fantastic. Uh, so now let's hope that, uh, I hope you listen to that, uh, this first of us as individuals having that spirit to express it, uh, experiencing it and knowing how to even express it because without uh, experiencing it, you wouldn't know how to express it. Mm -hmm. Now let's assume that we have ex experienced, experienced the spirit yeah. as individuals. Now how do we duly express it um, to bring about that positive change, you know? Um, like I said, it's a spirit and... If now the spirit, like you know, is the seat of our emotion and character. Once you possess a spirit or a spirit possesses you, um, you almost effortlessly exhibit what that spirit stands for. Yeah. If the spirit is of the devil, you don't need to be taught to do the things of the devil. If the spirit is of God, you don't need to really be taught to express or exhibit the character of God. So once we have received the spirit of resurrection, we must humbly submit to that spirit. And what is the spirit of resurrection? Love. Now, bringing it home to society, we do know that uh, from an individual, it goes to the family, which is the smallest unit of the society, and the society is made up of a thousand and one families. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, in this situation, uh, we'll talk about society as about organizations and bodies. How do you think that they can equally, through the message of Easter, effectively um, push out that spirit of gratitude and selflessness uh, to those who are really, truly in need? Um, I'll say that in two ways. Number one, like um, I've said, if the individual receives the spirit of resurrection, mm. um, is going to eventually translate into societal change because the society is made up of individuals, individual people, persons, and families. So, and if the spirit of resurrection dwells in, in the individual that make up an organization or a union or a society, those individuals are going to make laws or rules and regulations that are godly. And once they're able to make rules, regulations that are godly, they walk by those rules. The society at large will feel it, and it gets better. And which is why we also tell our people in churches that uh, Christianity is not a religion. It's an experience. It's an expression of love. Once you grasp the spirit of Christianity, that godly character, godly values, you sell it to your partners, your friends, your family members, and everyone imbibes it, everyone practices it, the society is going to benefit from it. Mm -hmm. But like I also know that organizations can take advantage of periods like this, maybe Easter period, instead of just celebrating, they can have seminars, and let people who understand resurrection talk you know, to their staff, and then they air it, it goes viral. People understand what resurrection is and know that it is more than festivity. It is a spirit, it is an experience, it is an encounter, it is an expression, not just merrymaking. Interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you see, we, how, how, do you, how would you advise us to practically do this? Now, we've said that, yes, to show love, um, you know, we've understood that it's a spirit and all mm -hmm. of that. Um, but let's highlight practically what we can do on the streets, in our workplace, at the supermarket, at the hospitals, away from the orphanages, because everybody rushes to the orphanage when they say they want to do good things. Orphanage is the very first thing they do. So how would you, could you highlight some practical ways, you know, just hitting them and nail on the head on how these people can, um, we can actually do this? Yeah. It, it's actually numerous, and I'll still go back to the spirit. Mm -hmm. It is the spirit that inspires your attitude and behavior. So if you have the spirit of resurrection, you, it's a default. Doing good becomes a default. You get to the traffic light, for example. Mm. You, if you have the spirit of resurrection, you will not be traffic light. And a road user, for example, you're not going to be selfish. You know the kind of uh, society yeah, we live in, yeah. Lagos, 
where people, everybody is trying to struggle. It's as if sometimes if you allow someone to get into your front, you will take the road away. That's the way people drive. But it's not going to take the road away. Sometimes you exercise patience, you obey the rules. At work, you are faithful to your work and dedicated to your duty as a child of God who has the spirit of resurrection. Those are ways to show it. Not necessarily going to orphanage. Yeah, going to orphanage is good. Go to um, uh, the inmates in prisons, preach the gospel. We go to the inmates. We share devotionals. We go to hotels and hospitals. We share devotionals. We are, in our church, we do a lot of rural missions. Mm. And when we do rural missions, we go with um, material things, clothing, shoes, and food stuff. Food stuff. Not just the gospel. Because the gospel is a package. It's a package yeah. of the message of love of Christ, salvation, and also physical welfare of people. So we take all of these things to those places. As we preach to them, we give them food. There are some people that the, the, the way you preach the gospel to them is to actually meet their needs. Needs, yeah. You know, so let, let's, you know. I think, I, I, I believe that we should do more of that. And that's where you really truly win souls. Because if you are Christ-like in your dealings and in the way you live, I think people would look at you, admire you, yeah. and want to be like you. Yeah. Not necessarily looking at you as a but, but in some or... cases, if you push that forward too much, people would think that that's what the gospel is. Mm. That it is just welfare, physical yes, welfare. Yes, yes. So you must let them balance know it. that, you know, balance it. Why we have come is the salvation of your soul. Mm. But you have one or two needs, we know that, and God also knows. So you can then meet some of the needs you are able to. Thank you so much for yeah. that. Now looking ahead, I mean, looking ahead, before we wrap up this conversation, let's talk about the, the roles religious organizations play and the faith communities in promoting the practical application of the resurrection message. Or let's say Easter, but I'm learning from you. Resurrection. The resurrection message mm. in the society. Yeah, religious organizations, uh, like I said before, that it is religion that has kept the message of resurrection within the confines of the four walls. The it is religion that has reduced it and weakened it. By, by so doing, they have weakened the power of it for themselves. We have reduced it to just a yearly thing, a yearly festivity. Mm. So I want to, like in our church, we don't talk about, we don't really talk about Easter. We can preach about resurrection any time of the year. Mm. We make people live in it. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, when he was given the Holy Communion, the eve of his death, he gave them the, uh, the bread. He said, this is my body broken for you. He then gave them the cup. He said, this is my blood shed for you, for many, for remission of sins. He, he, gave, he, he said something. He said, do it as often, as often as you want to do it in remembrance of me. So we are to commemorate his resurrection mm -hmm. all the time, often, not yearly. So I want to admonish religious organizations to preach about it more often, not only during Easter. Preach about it more often, preach about it on a daily basis, because that is the essence of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Resurrection is the major essence of Christianity. Paul said that if there is no resurrection, we are of all men most miserable. Mm -hmm. So it should to be preached daily. And the character of it, the goodness of it, should be expressed daily, not yearly. Churches need to do more in this regard. Mm. We need to do more in this regard. More. I'm sure they are trying their best, to be honest. It's not easy with the prevalent times and yes, the, the prevalent way the time, economy distractions. is. Yes. Like when you want to spend and people are, you know, I think we are in the era where a lot of people are so fast losing faith in mm. the Christian bodies. Mm. So it's even hard trying to convince, not just to convince, to let people know that, no, some churches and some religious bodies are still for that life, that lifestyle. They're still mm. for soul winning. They're still for caring for humanity mm. away from um, the ideology that people feel like church organizations are for are now money making mm, ventures mm. you know so i think that uh, religious bodies should do more uh, but yes it's not a sad period this is just a conversation we're having to inform us and educate us as best way possible on how yeah. we can truly truly become better individuals mm. um using this 
as a, point, a turning point for all of us. Mm. Mm. Fine, you don't know they say re celebrate resurrection every time. Yeah. But let's use this celebration Period. now as a <laughs> turning point to now start celebrating the resurrection. Yeah. Every single time. And by resurrection, I mean celebrating one another, yes. loving one another, showing um, forth for everyone that we see mm. along our life, you know. Mm. I mean, if you're in a position to do something, do something about yeah. it. That's why you are put in that position in the first yeah. place. Yeah. All right, so you personally, let me narrow it down to you. What's the plan for today? What are we looking forward to? What have you done in practical terms? You personally, I'm not talking about penal apostolic. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you personally, what have you, you know, put in, put up? And what, what, what does today hold for you? It's Easter Monday, by the way. Yeah, the whole of this season. Uh, anyway, um, somebody who lives the... The resurrection life all the time all the time people who know me know that i express it all the time like today i've done a few things uh both spiritually and physically mm -hmm. i have prayed for the body of christ i have prayed for our nation mm. i have prayed for some individuals that i know who have issues have interceded i believe that's one of the ways to show forth the love of god to express the spirit of resurrection I have also witnessed to somebody this morning, you know, I've witnessed to somebody about Jesus Christ, even though not in detail, but, you know, just in a flash. I've also done one or two things, you know, there are some students who are, you know, they are yeah. close to me, who have called from school, they want to come home for Christmas, I mean, for um, Easter. Easter and so on, and I sent what yeah, I have to, I them, have to them, them, to help them, Interesting. I love you it. know. One I or like two it. persons have come, oh, yeah, I'm hungry. I wonder and, how you guys handle all this and desire, people, where we're always hitting up, oh, pastor, we need this, pastor, we need, <laughs> father of all. Yes. It might be exhausting. Yeah, that's what it is, actually. Yeah. You know, Jesus had a lot of people thronging him, asking for one help or the, the other. other, and indeed, he was there for them. Interesting. He was there, that is part of the spirit God of resurrection. The strength Amen. All right, thank it's you so much, Pastor, Spirit. for being here. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for this too. conversation. I hope you all have been enlightened about the season of Easter, uh, what it truly rep represents. Uh, if you didn't learn to know that Easter was mentioned once in the Bible and resurrection was mentioned 42 times in the Bible. Yeah. At least I picked that one. I'll never forget it. Um, <laughs> and yes, don't forget that Easter is a spirit. You have to accept, willingly accept that spirit, experience it, and that way you can best express, express it. it. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much once again. Uh, we'll be wrapping up this conversation uh, right about now. Uh, stay tuned. In a quick moment, the show will be over. It's still Easter Monday. Welcome back, guys. This is where we draw the curtains on the show. We've had an interesting, insightful, and informative conversation with two amazing personalities, Pastor um, Bank, um, Bankole uh, of uh, Peniel Apostolic, and of course, Dr. Aki Akikbelu, uh, still talking about Easter and all the many wishes that you all had to share with your loved ones. Thank you so much for being a part of this amazing 55 Minutes on Silverbed today. Easter Monday with Bridget, your girl next door. Uh, our word for the day, of course, you can write this is Cutsy Bridget Chibufwe, live life to the fullest, live loving each one around you. And that's the best way to live, honestly. There's a fulfillment that comes with love. On that note, we call it a wraps on the show. Uh, thank you so much for being with me. I'll see you tomorrow, of course, as always. Happy Easter!